Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm Amanda Fowler of Inspiring Inkin. Welcome to my craft room. In today's video, we're going to be making these two bags. They are fold flat gift bags. So as you can see, they fold completely flat, but they open up and they've got a, a big section at the bottom. So there's plenty of room for your gifts. This is actually a video uh, one of two. So if you scroll down, you'll see links to the second video as well. Let's turn the camera around and get crafting. Here is uh, the first of uh, two bags I'm gonna make in this video. And this one, let me just get my scoreboard in and measure it for you. This one measures six and a half inches tall. Uh, three and three quarter inches wide and then the depth is two inches yeah the depth is two inches as you can see it folds completely flat and I'm so excited I've had so many requests for this kind of a bag um, and I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to make it and it's so quick and easy you're gonna love it um, we're also going to be making these fabulous handles as well um, so I'm gonna run through all of the things that you are going to need but first and I'm going to get questions so I better mention the fact that I'm wearing a bandage <laughs> um, Brian and I were gardening at the weekend um, it was time to prune the lavender and we have a lot of lavender bushes in our garden and I was busily going about my uh, pruning and managed to prune the tip of my finger so thankfully I didn't actually take the whole tip of my finger off um, it is kind of still hanging on in there but it did make a bit of a mess um, so I have covered it up I'm um, mainly to protect the wound really um, and I'm hoping it's kind of knitting together safely under there so but it's not gonna stop me crafting so it's fine I just have to keep changing the bandage um, Brian says I should actually stamp on the bandage or put some rhinestones on it, but it, it get, gets covered in ink. It lasts about 10 minutes, but no, no ink today. So we're all right. So here is, um, that bag. So what do you need? You need a scoreboard, a pair of scissors, some Tombow glue and a knitting needle. <laughs> Um, this is a four millimeter knitting needle. Anything, a, a thin piece of dowel, a, ske whoop, a skewer, anything like that is gonna work. Um, so that's all good. And then the paper sizes that we need, we need uh, for this size bag, a piece of paper that is 12 inches by eight and a half. And don't worry about writing these measurements down. Um, if you scroll down, whether you're on YouTube or on my blog, um, scroll down and all the measurements will be there for you. And then the handles are one and three quarter inches by 12. So you can get the whole bag out of one sheet. Now, let me tell you about this paper. This is from the Bird Ballad Suites on page, let me get you into shot on page 1991 of the annual catalogue and these are all the beautiful papers um, and I'm going to be making a second bag so you will see one of the other papers as well in a few minutes. If you would like a copy of the catalogue and you are in the UK, France, Germany, Austria or the Netherlands I can send you a catalogue and you can purchase from my online store. So send me a quick email, amandainspiringinkin.com with all your contact details and I will pop one in the post to you. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to make the bag first. Um, let me get the scoreboard in. I don't know whether you can hear, but it is raining outside and it's bashing against the window. We're in July um, here when I'm filming this video um, and it's been glorious. The weather's been amazing, um, but today it's raining. So with the 12 inch piece at the top, we are going to score at two inches, 
five and three quarter inches, seven and three quarter inches, and eleven and a half. And then turn it round, and then you're going to score at two inches. Okay, so that is all the scoring done. I told you you're going to like this because it was quick and easy. So on this corner edge, so that's the 11 and a half, we're just going to cut that piece there. And then you're going to cut up from the bottom to that score line. We've got three cuts there. Get rid of that. And then you are going to fold on all of the score lines. Just press them gently to begin with. So once you've pressed um, all of your folds gently, if you then go over and use a bone folder, um, the, the reason for using a bone folder is to kind of um, crispen up the, the fold line. But I do it with my fingers first because I just don't want the paper to crack. Um, just I'm just trying to encourage it gently first. So there we go. One more. Okay, so we're just going to make this into a bag and the quickest and simplest way is to fold it over so you've got this little tab here. Get a little bit of Tombow and press it down. And it means then that it will just sit nicely. Okay, so then we know that the seam is here, so this is going to be the back of the bag. Actually, let me just put a little bit more Tombow there. there go. Okay, so I know this is going to be the back of the bag. So I'm going to fold that piece in and these two pieces over the top. So I'm going to put glue there and there. Fold those two pieces over. And we're to turn it around so this is actually the front of the bag and we're going to put glue all over there make sure you put plenty on and pop that down like so okay so we're just going to give that a moment to glue to sit nicely squash that in okay so we're just going to let the glue set for a minute or whilst we make the handles so you're going to make two handles exactly the same and the first thing we're going to do is make them into a tube. So get your um, knitting needle or your piece of dowel and I'm going to turn it around because I want the, the bird pattern on the outside. And what you're going to do is put the needle in at an angle. Now this is where I wish I was better at maths and I, I knew kind of what that angle is. What you don't want to do is kind of do it this way, which is I think a 45 degree angle because um, it will make the tube very short. You want to do it sort of um, at a much lower angle, smaller angle. And you're just gonna roll that and press down hard you can see you'll be able to see my fingers will go a bit white press down hard as you're rolling um and slide the needle in because the paper is going to come all the way along here move it over a bit and then roll again and keep pressing and keep pressing and keep pressing keep pressing there we go so when you get to this end bit roll it first and then put a little bit of glue on it and you can see it will try and spring back out again so that's why you have to press hard and then you're just going to roll that down hold it press it and let go 
and you've got a tube. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same again. So lift it up and roll. And keeping the pressure on it is the most important thing with this. Doesn't take very long, um, but you just want to make sure that you can do that um, because the paper will want to spring back. There's the last little bit, and then just unroll it and put your glue down. And they are pretty much, oh, look at that, pretty much the same size. Okay, so you've got these paper tubes now, which are fab. And this is actually really strong. Um, I'm really sort of pleased with how this turned out. So what you're going to do now is squash them. And just take a bit of time. Because obviously the bag is flat, we don't really want um, rounded handles, so hence I'm squashing them down. Squash them again. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start curving them. Now, that little piece there is just sticking up, so let's just put a tiny dot of glue there. Press that down. And in order to curve them, just bend them with your fingers. Um, I have tried using the bone folder on them and kind of pulling it, but what that tends to do is it wrinkles the paper too much. So you just have to be patient with it and just give it um, a little bit of a bend with your fingers. And so once you've got that piece, what we're actually going to do is twist it a little bit so that um, it sticks flat to the flat to the bag. So I'm just going to continue to curve this one as well. And we are so nearly done. Okay. okay, so there's the two handles. So now the bag itself has um, had a second or two to um, dry. And what we're going to do, I've got the back of the bag is facing away from me. And I'm going to push in the two side panels. And what you want to do is squeeze it so it's even. And what you're doing, if I show you on this side, you're making a crease down here. So again, we're just using our fingers and we're just going to go down the bag. And I'll... I'll do it flat to see if you can see and you will get to a point where it kind of resists you um, you can't go any further and it looks a bit like that and then that is the point at which you're going to fold it back on itself so you're actually going to make a crease here and you're going to fold the bag flat and you just gently just encourage it to go flat and it will go and look it's formed a crease here you've got a score line that goes part way down and you've made a triangle there as well so quick and easy no fiddling around with difficult folds or triangles or anything like that Okay, so I'm just going over with the bone folder just to make sure it is going to do what it says. Fold flat and then look and it opens up and I'm hoping that you'll be able to see on camera. So you've got a score line here. It's actually put a score line in here and that one in there and it's done it all by itself. Well, with a little help. So let's just get the handles on. Um, and of course, what you can do with the handles is you can put brads on them um, and you can do reinforcing. And when you see a video two, I've got some bigger bags. We've got some more 
cardstock reinforcements going on there but because this is a fairly smallish bag I haven't reinforced it because I don't think you're going to be putting anything too heavy in there so what we're going to do is put a little bit of glue here and here and then we're going to pop the handle down and the handle down and I'm eyeballing it um, and I just need to just hold it there just for a second. And you just need, look, that's just pinged off now. Um, what I just do is just spend a second or two just rearranging the handle a little bit. Um, because, because it's paper and because it twists... You just want to um, encourage it to go the way you want it to go. So there we go. That's that one. And then on the back, again, you're just going to curve this around. So put glue here and here. And then, oop. I'm just going to pop that down and again I'm eyeballing it to make sure that they are about the right height and then just hold them in steady so that the Tombow has a chance to grab. And there we go. That one's... This is going to be the tail of the handle that wouldn't stick. Right, there we go. So, there you go. So there is... One bag. This obviously is the original. These handles are a bit longer. Um, and so that is, is one bag. But I am going to do a second bag just because I can. <laughs> it's so cute. It's very tiny. Um, and the principle is exactly the same. So let me just measure it to tell you how big this little tiny weenie bag is. So it's three and a half by three and the base is an inch and a half so let's start so this is one of the uh, other papers from the bird ballad suite so this piece of paper is nine and a half by five and the handles are one and a quarter inches by 12. And each time you're making the handles, you need it to be 12 inches long, even though it's a much smaller bag, um, just to get the length of the handles. So let's, let's do this quick, because obviously you know how to make the bag now, but I just need to give you the measurements. So with the nine and a half piece at the top, you are going to score at half an inch, two inches, five inches, and six and a half inches and then you are going to turn it around score at one and a half so I just fold on that one and a half inch score line so we're just going to trim that there and cut up exactly the same I have just realized that I've actually scored this in reverse so yeah, not that it matters um, on the previous bag I scored the longer panels first and then did it that way it doesn't matter which way around you go the principle is exactly the same okay so I'm just doing exactly what I did before Gently folding all of the score lines and now using the bone folder to reinforce them. And as always, when you're making something that is smaller, it is always a bit more fiddly. So you do have to take your time making something littler. So fold that down. Glue that in place. So 
So that is going to be the back of the bag. So we're going to fold that piece down, put glue on these two. And then glue on that bit. I just put my hand inside just to press it in. So we'll just leave that for a minute to dry whilst we make the handles. So again, get your knitting needle and just roll, roll the paper and just keep rolling it as tightly as you can. I'm actually going to pull that open a little bit more and then let's just put a little bit of glue there that's that one Paper sliding all over the place today. It's because I'm pressing so hard on the paper. You might find it easier actually, um, I know some people do, to actually twist the paper round the knitting needle like this. Um, let me just do that. So it's not quite as long, so I'm just going to let go of it a little bit and let it kind of spring back but what actually happens then is it makes um, the handle a bit longer. There we go. So there's the two handles. So I'm going to just press down exactly as before and you can see obviously the, the thinner strip of paper has made the handles a bit thinner and we'll just give this a little curve and again Just encouraging it to curve the way you want it to. Okay, so they're done. So exactly the same as before, you want to make sure that the seam is away from you and you're going to press in here. Now again, like I said, smaller things are fiddlier. So just go gently when you're pressing down because this, you're going to reach the point at which it doesn't want to go anymore quite quickly. So just press and then just keep pressing, pressing down and it will just fold flat. So we're just going to get the bone folder in there, press on those score lines, both ways and there you go. So you'll be able to see so there's the score line down the centre, there's the crease here, score line there, and then the bit that makes the triangle, which makes the fold. So again, we're just going to put the handles in. Ooh. A little bit of glue. What you can do, obviously, is you could use tape. Um, I said earlier you could use brads as well. Um, whatever. Whatever you prefer. Tombow is always my glue of choice so I will <laughs> I will always use Tombow even though it's not cooperating today. There we go and then just use the second one in reverse.
Right, okay, so there we go, there's the second bag. So let me just bring all of the bags back in. So there are the two smaller ones, there are the two larger ones. And you can actually see how little space they're actually going to take up when you're, when you're stacking them up. Um, so it's great if you want to make a great big uh, pile of them, perhaps for wedding favours, or for gifting or just so you've got a pretty bag for whenever you need one. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video making these fold flat gift bags. There is a second video with larger gift bags. I will put a link in the description so you can pop over and watch that as well. Um, all of the products that you've seen today are available at my online store and you'll find that by going to my blog www.inspiringinkin.com. I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.